Hi guys. Um, so I realize it's been a lot longer than a week. Um, first off, I want to say thank you for being patient with me. Um, the end of the semester for school, along with Thanksgiving and Christmas, have made for a pretty hectic month and a half here. But I am back. Um, this is take two now, because I always manage to get time tied. Um, hopefully there won't be a take three. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys today about the loneliness of a sealed tomb to finish up this little three-part series. Um, and death is kind of like a really heavy thing to talk about. You know, a lot of people avoid talking about it, they avoid thinking about it for as long as possible, and when they do think about it, often it's really, really sad. Um, and we actually recently lost a couple of members of our church, and it was really hard. And, um, honestly, I, I wanted to record it sooner, but I'm really glad I didn't. Um, but whenever somebody passes away and they have salvation, they have the assurance of going to heaven, to going to a better place to be with God, um, it helps a little. It doesn't help with us down here who are left to, you know be here without them. But the Bible gives us some very clear blueprints and instructions to know exactly how you know you're going to be saved. And the thing about the Holy Ghost, once you have it, is, you know, you don't have the loneliness of a sealed tomb anymore. Jesus rose from the grave and, you know, that person's spirit, when they pass away, it does not lie in the grave with them. It goes up and it meets God. And um, anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked. I'm sorry. Let me look at my notes. So I want to talk a little bit today about um, how you know uh, that you are saved and why the Holy Ghost is so important. Um, and in regards to why the Holy Ghost is so important is um it says in John 14 6 um that you know he would Jesus was the way the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father except through me. Um and I know it gets talked about a lot the whole personal relationship with Jesus side of things and that is incredibly important because you can't get to heaven if you don't know Jesus and in turn if Jesus doesn't know you. But there's another aspect to it, too, that I'm not sure um, gets talked about too often. And that's the fact that Jesus was the union of spirit and flesh. He was completely man and completely God. So when he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, if Jesus is the way to get to heaven and he was the union of spirit and flesh, doesn't that mean that we should be too? You know, if, if Jesus was the union of spirit and flesh, shouldn't we want that too, to be made more like him every day? You know, if we're just being made kinder and more gentle and more patient, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's the spirit inside of us that really sanctifies us and really sets us apart and really lets us know him and know him completely. Because even though we can know Jesus in the human side of him, there's another depth that you can't quite get to without the spirit. And I really wish I, I knew what Bible verse it was. Um, actually, it's, I, I wrote it down, it's 1 Corinthians 2.14. It talks about how um, some things can only be spiritually, dis spiritually discerned. And, um, you know, how can you spiritually discern anything without the spirit to, to help you with it? you know, and, um, you know, it's, I, I personally, I think of the spirit as like a holy sixth sense, you know, because in the natural, you have your five senses, uh, sight, hearing, taste, touch, smell, and that's how you experience the physical world around you. The spirit to me is like a divine connection with God. You know, it's, it's a way to experience him in a depth that you wouldn't even be able to comprehend without it. Like, 
you know, everybody uses the analogy, you know, you can't describe the color blue to a blind person accurately. You know, you can't describe a sunset or, you know, it's hard to describe an orchestra to somebody who's never heard a note in their life. You know, it, you can get close, but you can't quite put your finger on it and you can't quite put it into words. That's what the spirit does. You know, it, it gets you into heaven, yes. And that's an amazing, important thing, but it opens up a whole new world of feeling and emotion and understanding and wisdom and so many other good things. You know, um, I said years and years ago at this point um, to somebody that, you know, if you get on a train and you, you know, get a ticket to go somewhere, and I know the train analogy is used a lot in churches, so just bear with me. You trust the conductor to get you there safely, right? So why wouldn't you trust the conductor for your food and your clothing and your shelter and everything else that goes along with the train ride, you know? And so the conductor that holds your ticket, he doesn't just take care of getting you to the destination. He takes care of you for the duration of your entire trip. Um getting sidetracked again. Sorry, let me look back at my notes. Um, Sorry, guys. Okay. So anyway, yes, the Holy Spirit is a very good thing. Um, (laughs) It is uh, necessary um, to know that you're saved. And I know in other denominations, they talk about how, you know, believe and you shall be saved. Um, But, you know, being a Holy Ghost apostolic person, um, you know, I'm one of those people that believe the truth that, you know, you don't just have to believe. You have to believe and repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, not the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's a whole nother topic. Um, but you also need to be filled with Holy Ghost. And what a lot of people don't pay attention to, I think, sometimes in that initial study is the fact that it says you shall be filled. And that's not, it's not, uh, it's not an if, it's a shall, it's a promise, it's a guarantee. And I remember when I first got the Holy Ghost, like, I was really frustrated with God because, you know, I'd heard all about this Holy Ghost and I'm like, I want it, I want it, I want it. And I just kept asking God for it and thanking God for it and totally not getting the point that I could literally just reach out and take it anytime I wanted, (laughs) you know? Um, And then I finally got it. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Like, so this is what it feels like. So this is what it is, you know? And it it really changed everything. And I think if I hadn't gotten the Holy Ghost, I would have kept bouncing back and forth between the world and the church. And one of the first things that it did for me was, um, <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's a story for another time. But um, the last point I want to make about... Um, the loneliness of, you know, the sealed tomb. Um, second to last point, I'm sorry. No, last point. I might edit some of this out later, sorry. Okay, so, <laughs> shoot. Hang on, guys. I don't know if there's a pause button. Okay, there's not a pause button, whatever. So the last thing I want to talk about um, is how in the Bible in... Um, Matthew 7, 13, and 14. Um, It talks about um, the narrow gates and the the wide gates, right? Um, And how one is narrow and straight and not easy to find and difficult, um, and the other millions upon millions flock to. And a lot of people believe in God through different doctrines. And this is, I think, the hardest point of the entire video to make because I don't normally, I'm not normally a firm person. But when I read that verse, God convicted me of it maybe two years ago now um, and really talked to me about it. How the wide and narrow gates, it appears that they all lead to the same place. Like there are several gates to get into a city. 
you know, there are the smaller ones and there are the larger ones. Um, and, you know, when it says it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven, um, I heard a preaching one time where it was talking about how in um, some of the cities, the camel um, has to uh, actually kneel down with his baggage, you know, on its knees practically because the gates were so small that the camel, along with all of its baggage, couldn't fit through it. And so what they would do would they is they would un um un unbaggage is that a word unbaggage the camel <laughs> and um you know make it kneel down with almost nothing attached to it and then go through the gate on its knees and then exit on the other side and um it was all about how you know we have to let some things go if we're going to get into heaven we have to let go of our vices and our sins and our greed. And all the other things that, you know, the Holy Spirit help with, um, helps with. And when you believe in God and you pray to him and you love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you may think that you are following the narrow gate. And you may think that you're going to get to heaven. And I hate saying this. I hate talking about this because it breaks my heart every time I think about it. How many hundreds of millions of people go to church faithfully week after week, but they don't have the entire truth. And they're just going through the wide gate. They can hear from God on a daily basis, but if they don't have the spirit inside of them, if you don't have the spirit inside of you, you don't have that assurance. And I don't know how to tell people and get it across to them that it's the easiest thing in the world to receive and it's the best thing you could ever do with your life. And I've known so many friends that have died and a parents and grandparents that I've been really close to that have passed away without this assurance. And so many times I want to believe that they're in heaven looking down and anymore, the truth is really hard to get away from. And so I'm asking you guys, open yourself up to the narrow gate. It's so hard sometimes. It's not easy. There is a difference, um, a biblical difference, and I got to bring up the screenshot to say it right, between straight and straight. Um, and this is actually really cool. So in the Bible, in the King James Version, um, the word that's used is S-T-R-A-I-T, not S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. Um, and it'll take me a minute to get to my screenshot, but just bear with me, guys. I'm sorry. I should have had this prepared. I didn't think I was going to go with it, though. Um, here we go. Okay, so the words straight and straight have very different meanings. The former means not crooked. The latter is um, pent up, narrow, and difficult to be entered. Um... So, when it's talking about the straight and narrow gates, it's talking about, you know, how it's, it's narrow. It's, it's pent up. Sometimes, like somebody told me at hyphen camp one time, um, sometimes the only way forward is from the person in front of you pulling you ahead and the person behind you pushing you. You know, it's, it's crowded sometimes. It's cramped. It's, claustrophobic but it's amazing and wonderful and the view when you get to the other side of the narrow gate is unbelievably beautiful and it's the best thing you could ever do with your life is to stop and look back and reroute yourself if you've gotten sidetracked because god knows i have a number of times just make that choice if, if you don't get anything else from this entire series, know that getting the Holy Ghost and having that assurance makes everything else so much better. Like, I can't even tell you guys how much I have been through and how much it has kept me and 
how much closer I am to God now that I have it. Because I used to pray. I used to pray for years and years, and I would beg God for things and plead with him and cry to him. And he was there, but it's not the same as having the Holy Ghost. There's there's another depth and another dimension to knowing God that you cannot get any other way. And I just want you guys to keep that in mind and never forget it. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost yet, <laughs> you're going to get it. If you want it, you're going to get it. That is a guarantee. And there are thousands upon thousands of people every single day getting it. And I know that there are going to be millions and millions of people more that do. You know, I said in the very first video that sometimes I think God looks down at everyone who's saved and still says it doesn't feel like enough, you know, but... Every single time I hear a story of somebody getting the Holy Ghost, I start crying because it makes me so happy that there's even one more, you know? Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and let you go, guys. I think I'm going to post this take, so if I do, thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, I apologize for getting sidetracked a little bit. Um, I realize this is kind of a little bit of a long video, um, but... Thank you for being patient with me. Um, finals in Christmas and November was crazy, but lots of good things have been going on. Um, this has been a really interesting learning experience, um, and I think I'll be kind of relieved to get back to writing words again, but I might consider doing another video series um, soon, maybe. I don't know. Let me know um, what you guys think. It's been really, uh, it's been really good to do this with you guys. Thank you.